Hello, I'm Greg Matloff, and I teach physics and astronomy at New York City College of Technology, a division of CUNY located in downtown Brooklyn. The chapter frontispiece art in this project, which combines park-like terrestrial settings with cosmic views and exhibit photos from the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, was prepared by my artist wife, C. Bangs. Our co-author, Les Johnson, is a physicist at NASA Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and has directed NASA in space propulsion and interstellar propulsion technology development projects. Paradise Reclaimed, our latest book, is scheduled for publication by Springer Copernicus sometime in 2009. In it, we try to present applications of solar system resources to prevent or alleviate dire environmental consequences for planet Earth. Human effects upon the environment are not new. They begin perhaps a million years ago when our remote ancestors began to emerge from the human birthplace in Central Africa. As local environments were exhausted, the early human hunter-gatherer bands simply moved on. There was plenty of planet and not very many people. Our interaction with the cosmos is a lot more ancient. Many of the atoms that later formed the sun, solar system, earth, environment, people, evolved in the interior of a star that exploded perhaps five billion years ago. As the late Carl Sagan has stated, we are all star folk and are intimately linked to the cosmos. Heavy elements created within the supernova explosion seeded the hydrogen and helium-rich nebula, or dust cloud, from which our star and planet evolved. Cosmic collisions, such as the one that created the moon, almost destroyed Earth before life could evolve. Rivers of lava flowed. Mass extinctions caused by terrestrial and cosmic events almost extinguished life many times before we come on stage. Before humans evolved, what was the environment like? Was it a peaceable kingdom? Or was it a Darwinian situation in which only the fittest could survive? Slowly, humans learned to cope with our environment. Without technology, we would not have made it thus far. And this is our dilemma. We seem to be in a perpetual race between progress and societal collapse. A major issue is the explosion of human population. A million years ago, ET might have searched far and wide before finding a human. Now there are more than six billion of us. Architect Paolo Soleri in Arizona is developing a prototype arcology, a high-tech, environmentally-friendly community in which thousands of people might live comfortably at a high level without much environmental degradation. Many of the technologies he works with, solar energy, hydroponics, efficient recycling, etc., have been developed from concepts originally suggested for and sometimes applied to our early space communities. Yes, with good planning and intelligence, billions of people can live on Earth without destroying her. Humanity could serve to re-green our planet instead of being a plague. The current situation is altering climate rapidly. Is this unavoidable or irreversible? And what will happen to our planet as climate change impacts lifestyles in nations equipped with thermonuclear arsenals? Will climate cause a mass extinction of terrestrial life in which organisms die as rapidly as the French nobility died at the guillotine in the late 18th century? 
even if we continue to burn fossil fuels at the current rate and do nothing about the climate, these terrestrial resources are quite finite. So some suggest that we should scrap our global civilization and return to a pre-industrial era. But Earth can only support about one-third of our current population if such a path is taken. We suggest that the untimely demise of four billion people is immoral. We can and must begin to expand our resource base to include the vast spaces above Earth's atmosphere. Many nations, the US, Russia, Europe, Japan, China, India, are developing the technology base that can support space industrialization. The road to the solar system is open. Plenty of raw materials exist on the moon and within the near-Earth asteroids. We will soon have the capability to tap them. The US and Japan will soon experiment with Earth-launched solar power stations in space that will beam energy back to Earth at high efficiency. Constructing these facilities using space resources will greatly reduce the cost. For the energy-rich and relatively underpopulated US, space solar power may not be essential, but for China and India, it may ultimately be necessary. World space agencies realize that a major goal is to protect the Earth from cosmic impacts. If we must divert some of the near-Earth asteroids, why not mine them for resources? This action of applying advanced technology to protect the entire planet will change us. Unlike the dinosaurs who could not prevent the cosmic collision that doomed them, we can do it. And the effort will change us from a terrestrial to a cosmic species. More controversial is it the suggestion that we could build a cosmic sunshade to reduce sunlight and thereby alleviate climate change. Yes, we could do that. But if we build such a device, will humans simply continue to pollute at an ever-increasing rate without altering their ways? Paradise Reclaimed paints a portrait of an optimistic future. If we are wise enough to unite and work together on this, terrestrial life within the solar system can live as long as the sun. Even beyond that, we can spread through the galaxy on wings that catch and reflect sunlight and starlight. But all this is right now only a dream, only a possibility. People alive today will collectively determine if we will reclaim and regreen the Earth or if we will destroy it. <laughs>